Well, greetings one and all, and welcome back to another video here with your host, Andrew. Today, join me for what is a bright and beautiful morning here in the United Kingdom. The birds are singing, the skies are blue, and what better way to celebrate a beautiful Saturday morning than having a look at this pen here, which is the Otterhut Design 07 Corn Guilche barleycorn guilloche, whichever you want to use. It is a, a barleycorn pattern. Anyway, I thought what we'd do today, would um, head over to the table very shortly, and I'm just gonna do some writing samples with a pen, and maybe a few doodles on uh, some beautiful paper. We've got some Solar Ink Studio 224 loaded in this pen today, and I thought it'd be quite fun just to see how well this pen shades on. A slightly more premium looking paper. Anyway, full disclosure, this pen has been gifted to me. Um, no expectations on favorable reviews are expected in return, so I am gonna give you my full and honest thoughts on this pen. Now, if you would like to read, actually, this, uh, well, read this video, I guess, <laughs> I have actually got a written uh, version on inkstable.com. So if you'd rather go and actually have a look at that, then please go and do so, and you can read in your own leisure. And I'll provide you a link to that in the description down below, and, somewhere up here as well uh, with a, a clickable link. Anyway, please do join me over the table while I'll show you my thoughts. Firstly, I must thank Stala Zug and Nick for arranging for this pen to be reviewed. It was a most generous thought and I'm indeed humbled by the kindness of the community. And in full disclosure, this pen has been gifted to me. Still, I want to give this pen a fair assessment, as it is my belief that if there's something fundamentally wrong, people should know. Otterhut has an interesting history and one that shares a common story with those which are based in the idyllic location of Fortsheim, Germany. Now, this region in Germany is best known for their jewellery manufacturing, and as such is revered. When Otterhut started manufacturing in the early part of the 20th century, Cull Hut was the manufacturer of many things such as silver pens and accessories. Like most success stories, he did start with a small humble team of around about 20 employees, which to be honest was small even for that time period. Although I must proclaim I have not come across a vintage Otter Hut, so whether they traded under a different name, I'm not entirely sure. If you have any historic information, please let me know in the comment section down below. Now over time, the company grew and as such, so did the demand. In the 60s, Carl's son Otto took over the control and then started running the business. Much like Otto Hutt's original Bauhaus inspiration, the packaging that you are presented with is very clean and minimalistic. For some, this will be a breath of fresh air. For others, they may prefer the more traditional approach with a clamshell box. Still, the pen is well secured and the box functions well for its intended purpose. Lifting the pen bed is a little bit of a mission, I must add. There is a tab to help, but because it's made out of cardboard and due to the hollow nature of the cardboard construction, lifting can be problematic. A few times I thought I was going to tear the packaging. I guess they opted for cards to be more eco-conscious, but the reality is that it does make somewhat more of a challenging mission to get into the parts down below. Once you get to the compartment underneath, you're presented with a whole slew of items ranging from a smart leatherette pen case, polishing cloth, instructions, and spare ink cartridges. When I received my pen, I was also presented with an Otterhut bag, magazine and ink. I can't comment on if this is something everybody receives, or if this is something that you just get as a reviewer. Still, it was a nice presentation, and it gave me a sense of ownership and having something a class above. Especially, you know, when you consider the price of this pen, which we'll get to later on. Right, now let's have a look at the practicality of this pen. From a practical point of view, the pen overall functions well. However, there's a few points of consideration to be had. 
First, we will take a look at the material. This is made out of brass and solid sterling silver, so this does make the pen on the rather heavy side. Therefore, I would not suggest posting the cap, as in doing so will upset the balance. Now, I realise there are some people out there with mixed opinions on posting. Some absolutely must post and others are against it. Therefore, I would say that the latter would probably be happier knowing that you should not post this pen. The section tapers swiftly down from the collar of the pen and is finished in a very smooth texture. I know some people hate metal sections, but the way that the section has been ergonomically designed, I never really felt my fingers slipping. Taking a look at the length and girth of the pen, it is suited for mid to large size hands. I found that this pen did particularly well with longer writing sessions, as the pen is particularly well balanced. Now, looking at the clip, it is very easy to slip into a shirt pocket should you wish to do so. This is in part thanks to the spring-loaded design. Lastly, one test I like to do is leave the pen standing capped for at least a week to see if the pen dries out. The pen started up straight away with no issues. Although I did notice on longer writing sessions, the pen did seem to skip a beat with dry inks, and these dry inks did not seem to have any issues in other pens. Still, with a lubricated ink, I didn't experience any skipping whatsoever, so just take that into consideration. Now, let's have a look at the design of the pen. Well, as an artist, we are now going on to what I consider the fun part of this, as I am a huge admirer of design. Ulta Hut is certainly exhibiting their very German DNA when it comes to the design language, the Bauhaus principles being very evident. Very sleek curves, minimal trim and married up with the barleycorn guilloche pattern makes this one very smart looking pen. Definitely a pen I could see being used for a boardroom meeting or for wedding signings. Trim options are available in duotone or a plain silver. I think this plain silver is possibly more my cup of ink if I were to go ahead and buy one. There's something that is just very sleek about having an all silver pen. Speaking of the guilloche patterning, it is wonderfully machined and I love the fact that the patterning goes all the way down to the length of the pen. This is one remark I had with the Anoto Magna Classic pens where the technique just seems to stop abruptly about 2 centimeters from the finial. It's small little things like this which can upset my OCD. Looking at the nib, I feel that this is a work of art and the two-tone finish really makes this a statement piece. Honestly, this is one of the much nicer designs on the market. Now, personally, silver pens are not really my cup of ink and for myself, it's not the kind of pen I'd usually go out and buy. If you have read my other or watched my other articles or reviews on YouTube or Ringstable, I'm much more of a fan of Arushi and Mackier. Still, I am glad that there are these pens out there as they really do offer a wonderful appeal to a certain target audience. As I remark on this, it's strange because at the start of my fountain pen journey, I was all about black and silver pens. Now I must also mention that this pen has been prior released in America under a timed exclusive and this is now generally released to the mass market. I realise this may be a little bit confusing to some, but it is what it is. Now for those of you out there. You probably know that I am just a fan of a decent writing experience, irrespective of the material. For me, gold is nice, but only when it's super soft and bouncy. Otherwise, you might as well stick a steel nib on the pen. Of course, some people find this very controversial and insist that all pens of a certain price point come with a gold nib. Now, I respect everyone's opinion, but unless the experience is night and day better, quite often you're just buying into a material for the sake of its rarity. Of course, there are gold nibs out there that will always outperform steel, and I usually like to use this as a benchmark. Now, if we have a look at the King of Pen, or the Emperor, or probably even the Toma, or M1000, they all offer fantastic nibs that have a fantastic writing experience. But equally, there are steel nibs out there which perform almost as good, especially if you have a look at some of the modified nibs from Regalia Writing Labs, which do a 
I believe called a cross flex. Beautiful, beautiful nib. Now you may ask, why am I mentioning this? Simple, because when I am contemplating a pen's worth, I have to factor in the performance and writing is probably the biggest factor. Writing with this pen is a little bit more unique. I have found that the 18 karat gold to be very smooth and certainly the flow is very generous. There is spring to be had and certainly acts as a fantastic shock absorber when writing. Although at times I found that with some dry inks, as mentioned before, it did tend to skip a beat. Loaded with Sailor Ink Studio 223, certainly was problematic at times but when I changed to a more lubricated ink, it sang with high precision. My only complaint being is that I found that lubricated inks did tend to bloom my handwriting to a little bit more of the broadside. Now, I realize I may seem a little bit dismissive, but please trust me when I say I did enjoy writing with the pen. My only actual complaint with this medium nib is that it does tend to be a little bit too broad for my liking. Lastly, I'd like to remark that offering a steel nib variant would give users a little bit more accessibility, especially if they're after the aesthetics of the pen as opposed to the writing experience. Okay, now let's give you my final thoughts on this pen. Overall, I have really enjoyed writing with this pen. There are certainly endearing factors to the aesthetic choices of the guilloche patterning and the general presentation is fantastic. In this price segment, there are other sterling silvers that you could possibly opt for. Waldman, Pilot and Yard of Lead are but a few names that come to mind. Yard of Lead possibly being the stiffest out of all the competition. These pens come with a hand finished patterning and certainly charge a premium for their work. However, I feel that this pen is competitively priced and as such offers users a decent package, especially when you consider what you get. Now. Lastly, there is nothing wrong with the 18 karat gold nib, but not everybody desires a gold nib, and if I were to improve anything, it would be just to offer a range of steel nibs, as mentioned in the writing experience, just for those which wish to use that. You know, sometimes people like to have a stiffer writing experience, and that is perfectly okay. Okay, so before I say my goodbyes, I want to say thanks to Sam, Nick and Otter Hutt for arranging for this pen and gifting it to me for this review. And I will now see you in another video. Till then, stay safe and goodbye for now.